This is the classic Rubens tube demonstration, and what I have here is a very long pipe with very small openings, about 1 16th, I believe, drill bit openings. And I have a closed end tube to the right, and I have a speaker attached to my copper tube. And I have propane running through my uh, little inlets here. Now, my, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put through the speakers some known frequencies of sound, and you're going to see the standing waves that develop through this um, closed pipe and these standing waves we can measure and actually calculate the speed of sound. So if you want to use this uh, as a way to do that and calculate the speed of sound, what you can do is you can measure the length of the, um, in this case, to use as a reference point, measure the length of the light and that is 183 centimeters on the video and you can mark that up and do that appropriately and if you measure the individual wavelengths from the sound that I'm going to show you, you can actually calculate the speed of sound. The speed of sound is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. Any case, let's continue. So I'm going to project some sound waves through here, and I'm going to start with some lower sound waves, or sound waves with lower pitches that have um, longer wavelengths. Let's start with 550 hertz wave sound. So I'm going to shoot that through now. And you can see the corresponding wavelengths, and you can actually measure the wavelength here. And you can see and count with this sound. I'm not sure if you hear that pulse. Might be too light to pick up, but you can see where there is peaks and valleys. The peaks, of course, is constructive interference, and the valleys are the destructive interference, where the propane doesn't have a great chance to go through the inlet because you have molecules being pushed together okay in those areas in that standing wave so that was 550 so we're going to go up okay so we're going to go up to 600 somewhere so here comes 600 hertz sound now this sound of course has a higher pitch shorter wavelength and again you can count there as more crests here because the wavelengths are now getting smaller with the higher pitch. Okay, let's continue on to now 650 hertz. And again, you can, you can measure individual wavelengths with the known frequency to get your speed of sound. Okay, let me pump this up a little bit. And there is more crests and more valleys or nodes here in my waves because I am increasing the pitch. The wavelength is getting smaller. I love to teach this to my chemistry kids because when I'm teaching the Bohr modeling and talking about electromagnetic radiation, they don't get the sense of a wave. Obviously, we're talking about standing waves here with sound, but there's a good comparison here, excellent comparison with wavelength and frequency. So continue on. All right, let's go to... Uh, 700 hertz, and you get the idea what's happening. Pitch is getting higher. And of course, the wavelength is getting smaller. There's less jets of air being popped up here. Can okay, you see your nice nodes, destructive interference, and of course, your constructive interference of these standing waves of sound. Again, you can measure these. All right, let's go on and do even higher, 750. And again, I love to give this example. I love to see the Rubens tube and get the idea of, in this case, it's pitch and sound, but again, I can, I can basically parallel this with light waves, the idea that higher energy light waves, okay, have shorter wavelengths and higher frequency, a lot more pulses, okay? So you get the idea, let's do one more. Because I only have one more. Uh, let's do 800 hertz. Oh, pretty fantastic. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down, and I'm 
going to show you something really cool. A, um, a, I'm going to pulse through 500 and 501 to see if I can get a beat frequency happening through. So I'm cycling a 500 uh, hertz and a 501 hertz and hope we can see a beat frequency happening, okay, by the pulses finding, with a beat happening, you're going to see where there's constructive interference. Like, pretty cool. So this is beat frequency. And when you get that beat, That's where you have constructive interference. And that lull is when it's destructive. Kind of like when someone's singing chorus just a little bit off key to the rest of them, you can actually hear an off beat or this a beat frequency happening. Pretty cool. All right. And that's about it. Again, you can use this to your uh, advantage. Let's go a little low frequency. Let's go like a 400, get really low here. see that the wavelength, uh, the tube's not long enough to give me a whole wave, okay? So you get the idea, all right? Remember, if you're using this to measure the wavelengths, you need a reference point, 183 centimeters from light to light in the beginning. Some is not lit now. Okay, back to that. All right, that's the demonstration.